Hello, today we will be talking more VMware, specifically we'll be using VMware vCenter to migrate one virtual machine to from one host to another host, and more specifically it will be running while we are doing this. So this is a, I guess, a, a small intro into something close to high availability, which is one of the features or fault tolerance and should be seen as a part of a disaster recovery plan or component of. So first off, depending on which version of VMware you have, so I've got them all highlighted here. As you can tell, it goes from Essentials to Enterprise Plus on the bottom of the screen there. And depending on what kind of licensing you have, that will determine what kind of feature, what kind of settings and what kind of you know what kind of tools you can use and what you can expect from the product so we're going to keep it real simple my target audience today is the smb space so if you've got a couple of hosts a couple of physical servers this is intended for you it's just to show you around what's available and what you can do so first off if you like this video give us a thumbs up and of course subscribe that really helps us out it's really monumental for small channels like ours the algorithm loves the subscribers so thanks for doing that we appreciate it so from the essentials the essential and the essential plus really are your SMB sweet spot where they offer you three hosts, so three physical servers. And by that I mean there's three licenses available, and they give you the vCenter as well. So a host is again a server, and each server can have two physical processors, and each processor can have multiple cores, as most of them do today. Good luck finding one with a single core. So at this point, you'd have virtual machines running on multiple hardware. And the trick is, is when you want to do maintenance or you have to shut one down for, you know, something broke or whatever, hopefully it's, you know, <laughs> the unit is still running. What you want to do is shut it down to repair it. And what you'd like to do is move the VM, so the virtual machines over to another host so that they won't be affected. Now, if you've got some processes in the background, if you've got, for example, a databases running, CRM package, whatever it is, and you happen to have users around the planet, for example, different time zones, it may be awkward and really not advantageous to anyone to shut down servers. In this case, I mean virtual machines. So you just simply move them around on the hardware. And at that point, you can go and sh you know shut off a machine add memory whatever it is that you needed to do put it back together and then you can move your vms back now i made another video where i actually took a virtual machine from a workstation and by that i mean vmware workstation and i exported it and i imported it into the vSphere esxi environment so on an actual host and that is the machine that we're going to use today so it's nothing special it's something i literally had lying around as a test that's what i'm going to be using just to show you now let's go ahead and take a quick look and last note since i have this in front of me when you download the product so you've got basically your vSphere hypervisor so that's the vSphere esxi so you will have one of these running on each physical host and you will also deploy a virtual machine which will be called vcsa so it's a vcenter server appliance and that actually manages multiple hosts. So without that key feature, you will not be able to have high availability, fault tolerance, that sort of thing. And you won't have a migrate button. And let me show you what happens without it. Just, you know, real simple here. Do I still, okay, so I'm still logged in. I thought I was still logged in. So let's go ahead and just refresh this. That's what happens when you wait too long. So let's log in to one of these. So now I'm logging into an actual host. So this is the vSphere ESXi. As you can see on top, it says ESXi host. And what I'm seeing are my machines. I've got a lot of little messages here, which I can ignore. This is a test environment. So please be mindful that there's nothing really running on here. In fact, I've just logged into a machine that is literally empty. It's got no virtual machines on here. So there's really nothing to see, nothing to click on. I do have a data center set up. I do have 
very minor you know got one interface set up so i've got the bare bare minimum i do not put a license in here so this is all trial so when you do download from here um by the way when you download these are all the same it's all the same file so if you're getting the vcenter from either category you're getting the same file what makes the difference is when you put in your license that will unlock or rather actually lock away things that you're not entitled to from the trial because the trial is full you know full uh, feature rich and so forth you've got all the features turned on so so as you can tell well, actually you've got no virtual machine here but if we log into this other one where i've got my virtual machine so even if i wanted to okay so this is the machine that i want to move now even if i right click you'll notice here i don't have the ability to really to send it anywhere to transform it the only thing that i could do from here is to export it and if i were to export it i mean if i had a nas or a san or something that was in common or an external hard drive i could export it there and then go to my other machine and then uh, import it or you know basically use the ovf or ova file like i did in one of my other videos that's kind of the slow way of doing it now the ideal way is to go into this v center so instead of being at the machine level like these two are i'm going here and what i'm seeing are in my data center i've defined that and i have the two machines so this is 137 and this is 139 here they are so if i go look you will see my two virtual machines this is the actual vcsa that is running so this is the interface that i'm in right now i'm interacting with that right now now my other machine as i said is empty so if i wanted to take this machine here and migrate it again we're going to pretend like this is a critical virtual machine for me and i don't want this to go down this is where i would go and you know have the ability to move it so I've got it running here. I just wanted to show you that it's running. So we're going to keep it running. And uh, I mean, there's nothing in there really. So I'm going to right click on it. We're going to go ahead and click on migrate. And before, actually, before you do this, let me save you some steps. Now that's where we go into the migrate. What you're going to want to do is go to each machine. You're going to want to go into configure. And if you see, it's already there. Under system, there's time configuration. Now, what I want you to do is go to both machines, take a look, click on refresh, make sure the date and the time are very similar. By that, I mean they have to be within five minutes of each other. You should have the NTP, or the, the time protocol set up so that they are synced. I'm telling you this because I, I did actually have to restart this video because I ran into a problem and what I <laughs> had not thought of originally is to check the time. And they were 12 hours apart. I'm not sure how this happened when I set them up. Again, it's a lab environment, so I just kind of clicked next and, and went through it. And because the time was so different, it refused to migrate. So there is that. The other thing, too, is you have to make sure that, you know, obviously the both machines have, have a static IP address or have, you know, you're, you're able to connect to them and everything is working and there's no errors. So let's go ahead and just click on Migrate. And we're going to change both the compute resource and the storage. Now, keep in mind that if you had a vSAN or if you had, if you've got both hosts, both servers connected through, let's say, an HBA host bus adapter, if they're both connected to direct attached storage, throwing a lot of stuff at you, and I apologize for that, but if, if they're connected to a shared drive so a raid array for example that is sitting on a box and they both have access to it then you might only have to change the compute resource of course if you want to move only the storage you can do that as well and i'm not going into the high availability or clustering or any of this you know those subjects right at the second so what we want to do is we're going to be changing both so i literally just want to take this virtual machine and put it on my other server because it's in my case it's sitting empty so why not so i'm going to go ahead and click on this now again if you're an smb and you really have two servers and you don't want to pay an awful lot and you got the essential the essential will not allow you to migrate while it's on so mine's on right and there it is it's running and in our case, we're going to do next. We're going to say, where is it going to? So we're going to click on the second one there. 
and it's going to do a quick check compatibility checks succeeded so this is very important if there's anything wrong it will tell you on the bottom if for example when everything was set up you did not on one of the network interface cards or NIC, if you did not go you, you'll see one of the configurations in there you can select the v motion is a little check mark you need to put if you didn't do that then you it would tell you you just have to follow the instructions and go and find it and change whatever it says again if your timing is off you, you know the clocks are too different it will actually tell you there's an error and uh, you need to go and fix that so we're going to go click next and it's going to say which data store do you want it's real simple in my setup i've got a single data store each i don't have much room left but really i it's a very small vm that i have so in this case it will fit on there i just happened to create a raid i think it's a raid one i've got with two very small drives so not ideal i again i kind of took whatever was floating around and threw them in there so i'm going to go ahead and click on next now it's going from this adapter to and you know, I'm actually going to leave it to the default. Okay, I'm going to do next. And do I want to schedule with high priority? Or do I want to... So you, you can, you know, decide what you're doing. It's going to go from one to the other. I'm going to do finish. And then the only thing you're going to see is the percentage on the very bottom here. You can see my mouse. So on the very bottom. And uh, so it's a 29%. Now it's a 33%. So it's relatively quick. And... As you can tell, this virtual machine is actually working. So I'm going to go into it. And so, yeah, this, this machine is, you know, I'm inside the machine. It's working. It's not noticing that is 35% done being moved. And if all goes well, it should never stop working. Or the most I've said, I've done a lot of tests in the past. And with a, this is quite a while ago, but the... At one point, we did notice a slight hesitation on a server, but we did have hundreds of users hitting it with a remote desktop and a whole bunch of other things. Uh, there was a database running, there was a whole bunch of stuff. And so we did do one of these migrations and we did notice for you know, a fraction of a second where it just stopped and continued and no one noticed. Uh, we were just staring at it and <laughs> trying to see if it was going to work properly. This is one of the... You know, when it's a very important virtual machine and uh, it's critical and you've got a whole bunch of people on there and you've got administration that's uh, worried because maybe you're, you're shutting it down because something happened. In that case, I think we had a power supply that had almost gone on fire and there was smoke coming out of it and we pulled it out. But anyway, we wanted to clean up the server and whatnot. So we had done this as an emergency fix and it, it worked very well now this can take a while obviously i would recommend that you put 10g cards in all of your servers and of course in this case or you know we're better i mean they've got faster than that now but that's i've been using 10g cards whether they be copper or whether they be fiber optics but i mean look i've been using those as a default for years and the price has really gone down get i mean at worst get yourself a smaller switch you know, because I know per port on the switches, sometimes that's where the real, you know, they, a lot of the costs are, especially if you're going to try to get like a, you know, a 48 port switch and you want everything to be 10G. Well, that's not necessarily inexpensive, but I think in the long run, it certainly will be worth it. Now, yes, this is slow, as you can tell, this is taking forever, but on the bright side, during during this process it is literally still available so i can still you know click on stuff and it's still opening up and i wish i should probably not open stuff there because i've got things that might be for clients but at, at the end of the day so and he, see here we're not really seeing that much activity <laughs> i'm just curious to see if we can spot anything really going on here so, I mean, it's very negligible. So, the memory is still being used by the... This is the 3.7. So, yeah. So, we're still using the memory and the processing of the original. And at some point, you're going to see a trade 69. So, it is going. And there we go. So, I believe that we are now done. All right. So, let's take a quick look at what happened here. So, memory still seems to be consumed. Let's see. So now we can see that we are now running off this machine and let's take a look. Well, we lost the connection. 
So that's because we were connected to here. And now if you do web console, you'll notice that we are still open and still running. So it did not stop running at all. It's just our console stopped because here when you select it, it's associated with this machine on this host. And since it's swapped over, that turned off. So that in a nutshell is how you migrate from one host to another. Again, if ever you have the essentials as opposed to you know higher end license, then what you'd want to do, again, it might be perfectly acceptable in a smaller environment, is simply go ahead and power it off, just power it off, and then you do the migrate and then it will work. So that's the advantage of having the vCenter set up is that is one of the features that is available to you. So if you can leave some comments below, see how useful this was for you. I'd really appreciate it. And we didn't really get into other things. We can, of course, add other features if you've got the higher end versions of this where you've got high availability then you can also set it up so that, for example, if your VM, let's say, breaks or something like that, stops working, that you can pre-arrange this so that it will have fault tolerance built in. It will automatically move your VM to a different host or if the host itself becomes too congested. So there's a combination of things that you can do with these tools. Now, if you're a smaller environment, you're probably not wanting to pay uh, to do this sort of, you know, you, you might not be 24-7, you might not want to invest in the high cost of the licensing, and you may not have, you know, maybe the best of hardware. And so this type of tool, what I've just shown you, is probably something that is reasonable because there's, it's really a bit of your time and, you know, going to click and migrate and so forth. It's not automated, but it, there's also very little cost or very little headache to it. It's very simple to use. The other thing that I'm going to throw out there is if ever you want an alternative tool, I know that they also use a product called Veeam uh, to do backups. And uh, amongst other things, there's Acronis as well. It's very good. So in Veeam, I know that I can, well, not only back up and I could restore it to a different host, but you can also migrate it depending on the version and the licensing you have of it. Uh, you could also migrate it from one host to the other. That's also one of the features that they provide. So there's a whole mix of things that you can use. So if you don't have specifically you know the, the vmware licenses to do what you think you might want to do check with your other solutions that plug into it also keep in mind though while i'm on the subject if you're going to want to do uh, backups so those backups are done live like in veeam you can schedule them and they can do them every you know half an hour or every day whatever you want uh, you need to have a paid license so obviously if you've got a trial going it's probably going to work no problem but if you're if you get the free hypervisor so basically the vmware vsphere esxi but the free version the backups will not work that's been disabled and that's on purpose so that you go and get a license so i just thought i'd throw that out since we are talking about disaster recovery and things to move things around so in a nutshell, that's how you do it. If I wanted to move it back, I would simply do the same thing. In fact, if I want to just shut it down first, it probably would be faster. And this is not the way to shut down properly a VM, by the way. There's nothing in there. I don't care what happens to it. But if I do the migrate, when I decide to migrate back, it should go faster since at this point it is no longer running. So I can just put it right back to where it was. I just do next. I click and let's see what it said here. Provisioning network is not configured. Destination can be the little, okay. So it's just saying that, all right, well, we don't really care at this point. We're gonna keep it like this. We're gonna do next and we're gonna do finish. And I'm just gonna do this quickly to see what kind of speed we're getting out of it. Cause I imagine that since nothing is running, you'll have nothing better to do than to move it. Well, it's not that much faster. Anyway, you get the point. So, Again, let us know what you thought. Put comments below. You can visit us at www.ctobob.com. Of course, I am Bob Pellerin, CTO Bob. Always having a blast showing you these different little things you can do with VMware. Hopefully, this environment is safe and stable for you and it keeps uh, all of your business running at all times. So, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.